Hey y'all, it's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and this is a Heal Heat Top 10. The topic of this Top 10, wrestlers that love marijuana, aka I'm recording this on April 20th, which if you all know it's a stoner holiday 420. No, I did not partake, but I decided, you know, being that it's a holiday, let's make a list. Let's jump right into it. Our number 10 wrestler is Randall Keith Orton. Now, you may question this, or you may, you may not, depending on how far you know, but it's been reported that there's at least twice, and maybe three times, twice that Randy Orton's been suspended for smoking the marijuana, and a third rumored kind of soft suspension for getting actually caught smoking it backstage and the other two were it came up in a in urine tests so depending on who you think hear from Randy's been caught either two or three times smoking marijuana and it just goes to show you depending on who you are depends on what happens to you with these wellness violations which we'll see as we go through this list but doesn't seem to have hampered his career. More power to him. Now our number nine. One of the guys that was out front, loud and proud, toting marijuana use on WWE, WWF at the time television, The Road Dog, Jesse James. Now if you remember, I don't know how much of this the writers or even Vince knew, but he would get by by saying rolling a fatty, smoking blunts, all kinds of crazy stuff. He would say it for those of us who knew what that meant, which was most of the people under 40. They got the joke. They got what he was kick trying to say. I don't know that Vince McMahon did. I don't know that he just thought it was funny, dog like dog rolling a bone. Who knows? Maybe he did. Maybe... Vince was toking it up with the road dog. But he was one of the guys that was most vocal on television about it and seemed to subliminally get it in rather often. Now our number eight guy could be considered the flag bearer for the current generation of wrestlers as far as weed smokers. And that's the king of the bros, Matt Riddle. Now... If you follow Matt Riddle's career, the reason he's not in UFC anymore, he failed some marijuana tests. There is also rumor that the reason he's not on the WWE roster, despite the fact that he's tremendously talented and hyper-charismatic and a guy that just based on that, you would think they'd be clamoring to get on there, is because he doesn't want to put down the weed. It's also rumored that this is why he's not booked in New Japan, because he doesn't want to put down the weed. I know he did a, did a little short stint in New Japan, but rumor is that's why he hasn't been brought back. But, as the sentiment and maybe the, the people inside WWE or even New Japan or this country of Japan change... We might, I believe we're going to see more of Matt Riddle. I think his talent is going to eventually... There's, he's going to be un, undeniable to get him there, so eventually they're going to have to bring him in. Now, is he going to pop a piss test every 30 days? Maybe. But, from what I understand and what I've heard in shoot interviews, if you fail a, a urine test for marijuana, it's not necessarily a strike. It's more of a fine, so there's that. Now, our number seven is a wrestler that's actually been on the cover of High Times Magazine, and that is Sabu. Sabu, again, while not being as vocal, it's come out in shoot interviews and stories and upon stories that Sabu is big into marijuana. Other drugs as well, but 
any time a wrestler graces a cover of a magazine like High Times, which is for the the weed and pot smoker community, you gotta assume they're a flag bearer. So for that reason, that reason alone, plus the fact of who his most who he's mostly been associated with in his career, you have to put him on the list. Now our number six guy. Our second member of D-Generation X, our first member of the NWO to make the list, X-Pac, or Six, or the One Two Three Kid, or just Sean Waltman, whatever you want to call him. I call him X-Pac, I think, to me that's the best of his names, to be honest with you. X-Pac has been very vocal about how he thinks marijuana helps him, even after all of his drug problems, he... He says on this podcast that he still tokes up, he still smokes weed, and he he believes in the med- medicinal aspects of it as well. So, can't knock the guy for a guy that's a smaller guy that did a lot of, has a lot of mileage on his uh, joints, not to be pun, pun not intended. You gotta, you gotta imagine that any kind of reprieve he could get is going to be a welcome one. And to not take opioids and take something that's a little bit safer, kudos to the guy. Now our number five guy is a guy who's had his career derailed at times because of this. The antithesis of number ten where it didn't seem to hurt him at all, our number five guy, Jack Swagger, seems to have been taken from being a main event guy getting arrested with marijuana at the wrong times, I believe twice, derailed heavyweight championship runs or heavyweight championship plans, which makes him untrustworthy, which ultimately pushes him down the roster, which ultimately pushes him off of the roster. But Jack was out there having fun. What else can you say for the guy? For number four, one of the guys that a lot of people, no matter what drug you mention, bring him up, and that's Jeff Hardy. The charismatic enigma, the guy, a daredevil, an innovator, an artist, with a lot of this type person, and I, I'll, I'll put Jeff Hardy in the vein of a Kurt Cobain or a Jimi Hendrix or a Pablo Picasso, Vincent Van Gogh, or even a Quentin Tarantino. A guy that just sees the world at a little bit of a different, sees the world a little bit differently, and comes at the world from a different angle. A lot of these guys take drugs recreationally. They don't see them the way that society does it. They don't see them as the bad thing that the rest of the world does. And Jeff has to be one considered one of them guys. One of the guys that you think of when you think of drug culture and wrestling. What else can I say? It's a Brother Nero. You knew he'd come. Shout out to shout out to Broken Woken Matt Hardy. We love that gimmick. Our number three guy, Evan Bourne, aka Matt Seidel. Again, a guy that got caught multiple times in WWE smoking marijuana, got caught at an airport in Japan with marijuana, kind of pushed the limits of what he could do. Again, you got to imagine, if he wasn't out there so out front with his marijuana use, that he'd be a guy that would be one of the, one of the mainstays of the 205 Live show, a guy that they'd be promoting for that. But again, he's kind of against what the company policy is, especially at the time that he was there, because he's been out of WWE uh, roughly three, four years now. So, even to this point where they haven't changed much, you got to imagine four years ago, three years ago, they looked at it even worse. Now, our number two guy is a guy that you don't really put his wrestling career with smoking weed, but his after-wrestling career 
He's become a huge advocate for the legalization of marijuana. He's a guy that is trying to start up his own dispensary, and that's Val Venus. Yes, the wrestling porn star is a huge, huge advocate for marijuana. If you don't believe me, go to his Twitter page. You can't go more than three tweets without him saying something about marijuana and trying to make it illegal. Another one of these people that believe in the, the medicinal purposes, which I do as well. I believe that it should be legalized for medicinal purposes at the very least. My views on it altogether is it should be legalized because there should be personal, personal accountability. But that's something for a, a political show, not a wrestling show that's just having fun and doing a cool video for a 420. Val Venus, number two on the list. And now, before I go into the number one, we do a little something here at, the, at Heel Heat called the best of the rest. Basically, people that were considered for the top ten, but they didn't quite make it. One would be Brian Kendrick, and Paul London will put them both together as kind of a, a pairing. Both of these guys had their WWE careers, again, cut a little bit short because of their use of marijuana. Both have been very open, Paul London more so than Brian Kendrick. you got to imagine, much like Matt Seidel, they'd be, they'd be two guys that'd be... Heading up the, uh, the cruiserweight division if they weren't against company policy. Kendrick actually is, so... If London wasn't, you'd imagine he'd be right there with him. And our next guy for the best of the rest is a, the one guy on this list that's actually in the WWE Hall of Fame. And that's the Godfather. The funny thing is, much like the Road Dog, Godfather would sneak in references to marijuana while he was on TV. Um, I, more, most famously, on the Owen Hart tribute show, him and the Road Dog talk, talking about, talked about going to back and rolling up a fatty and sparking one up for Owen. He said it all through his career. I mean, but his gimmick was outrageous. I mean, he's a pimp. What else do you expect? Luckily, he lives in Nevada where it's legal, so Godfather, have fun, my friend. Now, before we go into our number one, if you think I've left somebody off the list, you think I forgot somebody, put someone up too high, put someone down too low, let me know what you think. Hit me up in the comments. Make sure you hit like and share. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for me. Now, our number one wrestler who likes marijuana who else could it possibly be Mr. Monday Night the whole fucking show Rob Van Dam what more could I say when I mentioned Sabu being on the cover of High Times earlier Rob Van Dam was the guy that was on there with him when I talk about people who talked about smoking weed on the air from his ECW run all the way through his WWE runs, all the way through his TNA runs. He was vocal about it. He put subliminal messages in there. Whenever he did interviews that I asked him about it, he did not shy away from the subject that he did, did smoke weed and he supports making marijuana legal. The guy, much like Matt Riddle for this generation, Rob Van Dam was the stoner wrestler. He was the guy that you could obviously look at and go, that guy's stoned, his attitudes, he's stoned. And he was legitimately stoned. The guy, the standard flag bearer, added to his uh, list of names, Mr. 420, the number one weed smoker in wrestling, Rob Van Dam. Actually, I should do the Rob Van Dam. Kind of the precursor to Adam Cole, baby. Yeah, yeah. You get it. But anyway, basically that's all I have to say about this. This was just one I threw together for fun, folks. Don't think too much into it. It's just a fun little thing. Um, if you enjoy marijuana and you're watching this while it's still 420, 
go ahead and blaze one up while you're watching. Blaze one up now. Hell, if it's 5, 5, 15, 6, 13, wherever, what time, no matter what time of day, if you feel like blazing up, go ahead because I'm not against that. I think you should be able to do that. Again, personal responsibility, different subject. This is just a fun little show. My name is George Coles, and this has been a Heel Heat Top 10.